Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams, and today we're going to talk about what happens when the distribution of your data is not normal. What we know is when we do not have normal distribution, we cannot apply an empirical rule. Instead, we have to use Chebyshev's theorem. Because let's take a second and look at what happens when the data is not normally distributed. Here I have a distribution histogram that's not normal. And so if I were to superimpose a relatively normal looking curve and I were to bisect that in the middle, you can immediately see that the amount of data above the mean and amount of data below the mean is not the same. Because of that, unfortunately, our friend the empirical rule goes right out the window. Instead, with non-normal distribution, we will employ Chebyshev's theorem that says at least 1 minus 1 over k squared percentage of the data will fall within k standard deviations of the mean. And we can use this as long as k is greater than 1 and the data is not normally distributed. What's important for you all to remember is that when we're talking about k, all of these references to k, k is the number of standard deviations. In other words, your standard deviation might be two minutes or 12 pounds or $8 or 16 weeks. That's not what K refers to. K refers to the number of standard deviations within the mean that will contain a given percentage of our data. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite questions, which is the life expectancy of Canadian women. So we'll look at the question. The average life of a Canadian woman is 73.75 years. So down here on my curve, I know that my, ne my mean is 73.75 years. I was also told that the standard deviation of the life expectancy is six and a half years. So I have a sigma or standard deviation of six and a half years. And using Chebyshev's theorem, determine the upper and lower bounds. So I'm looking for the upper bound and the lower bound so that at least 90% of the population is included. So between this point on the curve and this point on the curve, I want to have 90% of my data or 90% of Canadian women included in this interval. The key to solving this is we need to know how many standard deviations, i.e. k, from the mean do we need to go in order to get 90% of the data um, captured when distribution is not normal. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take Chebyshev's theorem here, and we're going to set it equal to the 90%. And then we're going to solve for K, or the number of standard deviations I need to move in order to include 90% of the population. Honestly, from this point forward, it just becomes an annoying algebra problem. Okay, so here we are, and we're going to solve for K. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one by subtracting 1 from both sides. Now what I end up with is negative 1 divided by k squared equals negative 0 0.10. And for the love of all things good, we're going to eliminate our negatives by in our head divide, multiplying both sides by negative 1. And so now that leaves me with 1 over k squared equals 0 0.10. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get that k squared out of that denominator by multiplying both sides by k squared. So now I'm to 1 is equal to 0 0.10 k squared. Let's move Mr. 0 0.10 over to that left side where we will end up with 10 is equal to k squared, but I need k, so I'm going to take the square root of this side, I'm going to take 
the square root of this side, and I'm going to end up with 3.162 equals K. In other words, I will have to move 3.12 standard deviations above and below the mean in order to capture 90% of my data, given that I have non-normal distribution. So now that I know how many standard deviations we need to move in order to capture that 90%, we can find the values that represent that interval. So we're simply going to start at the mean, which is 73.75. And we're going to move to the right, which is plus, and to the left, minus. And we just solve for k a second ago as 3.162. The question told us the standard deviation was 6.5 years. So I'm going to take 73.75 plus this, 73.75 minus this, and I'm going to en end up with an interval that looks like 53.2 to 94.3 years. So if I come back up here to my original question, right, we knew here that the mean a terrible looking mu, was 73.75 years. And now what we know is that 90% of Canadian women will live between 53.2 and 94.3 years because what we've done is we have gone – plus or minus 3.162 standard deviations above and below the mean in order to capture that 90% of our data. So I hope that this helps your understanding of how to work with Chebyshev's theorem when we have not normal distribution. And until I see you next time, I hope that you'll be well.